For more anatomy related videos please subscribe to my channel, Learn with Dr. Tanya Hashik. Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss the anatomy of the large intestine. So today we will only discuss the general anatomy of the large intestine. We will go in detail about each of the parts in the upcoming sessions. So the large intestine, it extends from the ileocecal junction to the anus and the parts of the large intestine are the cecum, the ascending colon, the right colic flexure, the transverse colon, the left colic flexure, the descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum and anus. So these are the parts of the large intestine. So the parts are cecum, ascending colon, the right colic flexure, transverse colon, the left colic flexure, the descending colon, the sigmoid colon, cecum and also rectum. And in the angle between the terminal part of the ileum and also the cecum, there is a narrow diverticulum called as the vermiform appendix. The large intestine it extends from the ileocecal junction to the anus. So, it extends from the ileocecal junction that is ileum. It is the last part of the small intestine and the cecum. It is the first part of the large intestine. So, it extends from the ileocecal junction to the anus. And this large intestine, it is about 1.5 meter long. So, it is about 1.5 meter long. We will go in detail about each of these structures. That is, uh, each part of the large intestine, that is cecum, column, colon and rectum. We will go in detail in the upcoming sessions. Here, I am only giving you an idea. That is, the general idea regarding the structures of the large intestine. The large intestine, it receives a matter from the small intestine. So, it is adapted for the storage of the matter that is received from the small intestine and there is presence of columnar epithelium which is really helpful in the absorption. Another important function of the large intestine, it is wider in caliber compared to the small intestine and this caliber it is more towards the first parts and it is tapering towards the end. So, the first, parts, the first part of the large intestine, it has more caliber for the storage and by the end of the large intestine, it becomes more tapering. And the greater part of the large intestine, it is fixed. So, the greater part of the large intestine, it is fixed except at the appendix, the transverse colon and also the sigmoid colon except the transverse colon, the appendix and also the sigmoid colon all part of the large intestine it is fixed. The longitudinal muscle coat of the large intestines they form ribbon like structure and these ribbon like structure are called as tenia coli and there are three types of ribbon like structure they are the tenia libra, tenia mesocolica and also tenia omentalis. We are not going in detail about that. So next is the blood supply to the large intestine. The blood supply it is derived from the marginal artery of Drummond. So blood supply it is it is receive, received from the marginal artery of the Drummond. And the lymphatic drainage. The lymphatic drainage it is through the epicolic lymph nodes, the paracolic lymph nodes, the intermediate nodes and also terminal nodes. So the lymphatic drainage it is the epicolic lymph nodes, paracolic lymph nodes, intermediate nodes and the terminal nodes. So next is the nerve supply. So the sympathetic nerve supply it is received from the celiac and the superior mesentery ganglia whereas the parasympathetic it is received from the vacuus. So today we discussed about the large intestine. So first we discussed about the parts that is the seeker, ascending colon, the transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum and also the anus. So these are the parts of the large intestine and it is about 1.5 meter long and the function it is storage as well as the elimination of the fecal matter. 
So this is the end of today's video. This is the end of today's video. For more videos please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon.